You're watching The Open on BNN Bloomberg. I'm Amber Canwar. We just got a read of retail sales in this country on a headline basis. Didn't advance as much as expected, but the flash estimates can uh, suggest that for September, we are still increasing at a healthy clip. Now, that's the headline number. When you strip out autos, sales plunged, actually, in August, and most categories fell we are talking about an August number. It's almost November, so we got to take that with a grain of salt. Perhaps more relevant, we've got Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem speaking this afternoon at IMF meetings, so we're going to be monitoring that. Let's bring in Don Desjardins, Chief Economist at Deloitte Canada. Thanks so much for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, if I can get my credit card statements <laughs> from last month, why can't the government do the same? I mean, how, how do you interpret what's going on with the Canadian consumer right now? Well, I think the consumer um, is under pressure, but seems to be feeling a little bit better. The conference board uh, put out their confidence indicator and it showed a pickup that, in fact, consumers are saying, well, maybe feeling slightly better. I guess no great surprise given that inflation pressures have eased so significantly and, of course, the Bank of Canada having lowered its policy rate. Yeah, and to what extent do you expect that to flow into the consumer psyche? Because, you know, the most obvious place would be housing mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like, at least right now, people are running um, to the housing market like they have in past cutting cycles. Yes, that's true. And I think it is the communications that rates are still going to go down further. We know that affordability remains relatively stressed. And so I think for people who are looking to enter the market, they're thinking, OK, well, if I get even a little bit more relief, um, maybe I'm going to stand back at this stage. Because, of course, even though rates are going down, Prices have corrected somewhat. We're still in a pretty unaffordable country for housing. And you, and you mentioned kind of the feelings of Canadians and maybe taking a bit of comfort in lower rates and lower inflation. But unemployment um, mm -hmm. is picking up. How do you think about how, the, the intertwine of that? Well, I think that's the key. You know, when we look at surveys of what companies are saying, they're saying, well, I'm not necessarily looking to add to my workforce. But at this stage, I'm not necessarily looking to cut. And that's going to be the really important driver, I think, as we look to 2025. Is that, in fact, the way it plays out? The unemployment rates climb, of course, reflected moderate employment growth against a surging labor force. So that's where we got this increase. Now, we're going to hear from Tiff Macklem this afternoon, as I mentioned. I mean, we're not an island, right? <laughs> we've got we to, are not. We've got to uh, take account what's going on in the U.S. And it just seems like, so we've done this larger rate cut, um, now four rate cuts in a row, can, can maybe count it as five because it was 50 <laughs> basis points. Um, the U.S. looks like it's in a tricky spot in terms of cutting rates any further. And I know that's still priced in for November, but mm -hmm. are we talking about a situation where we start to diverge again? Canada versus U.S. monetary policy? Well, I think Canada's economy reacted as you typically would have expected uh, to these rate increases. And so we have seen a slowing in economic momentum. Where in the U.S., the economy still seems to be relatively solid. Lots of factors underpinning the stronger U.S. performance. So for the Fed, you know, yes, they kind of came out guns blazing with that 50 basis point move. I do think they'll probably continue to lower the policy rate, but it will be, at least in our view, more gradual than 50 basis points. What's the spread that is okay between <laughs> Canadian rates and U.S. rates before it's a problem in the currency? Well, I mean, I think we've seen it move considerably higher than it is today. So what's priced into the market right now, I think, suggests that at a, with the currency where it is, it, we're, I think those are reasonable um, spreads. Okay, to like a hundred basis points. Yeah. Okay. So we don't see a big. I mean, our, our, we have a, a really a dead boring <laughs> forecast for the Canadian dollar. Not a lot of movement on it. Yeah. But it really embedded but in there. Maintaining the discount, I yes. guess. Yeah. yeah. Or like around seventy-two because we were looking at at, at something higher. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not uh, so long year. ago. Not yeah. so long yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you mentioned kind of the U.S. being an outlier. Those were comments that were made by Christia Freeland um, in the last 24 hours, the mm -hmm. finance minister, you know, peppered on why is Canada's productivity so much worse relative to the U.S. And Freeland pointed out the U.S. is the aberration here. Look around the world yeah. um, and, and economies are struggling. We take Germany uh, mm -hmm. as an example. 
So, I mean, we often as Canadians, that's our condition is to compare <laughs> ourselves to the U.S. But, you know, is that a valid comment to make? Well, it's true. I mean, when we look at the U.K., for example, it slipped into a shallow recession at the end of last year. It's mm -hmm. recovering now. But still, we are in a, a weaker global growth environment. The IMF unveiled this week their forecast, 3.2 percent for global growth. That's about half a percentage point lower than prior to the pandemic in the decade. So, yeah, I think in general, we are seeing economies react to these higher interest rates, whereas the U.S., lots of money being poured in by the government, business investment picking up, and households in the U.S. really spending because they had their pent-up savings, which they used. We've also got an election in the U.S. Uh, to to contend with, and you know that's interesting in the context of I think Donald Trump has got the the fear around what's he going to do mm -hmm. on trade. So that would be coming at a time of U.S. is already pretty strong. Everyone else is relatively weak. Um, you know, does that apply more pressure to growth prospects? Well, certainly, I think it does. And so it'll be interesting to see. And for Canada in particular, are we able to skirt? Mm -hmm. um, some tariffs being applied to us because of our relationship with the U.S., such tight integration between these two economies. So that, you know, for us, but it is certainly a downside risk if we do go through this period of massive tariff being applied across the board. 